Hey guys, welcome to another biochemistry lesson. In today's lesson, I'll be talking to you guys about iron absorption, transport, and metabolism. So say you've ingested um, iron in your diet, and say you've got Fe3+, plus or iron 3+, plus in your intestinal lumen. What'll happen, guys, is that Fe3+, plus will come into contact with, uh, with a protein on an, on an enterocyte. Now, an enterocyte is just uh, a cell that lines or makes up the ep intestinal epithelium. So... Uh, what will happen is that Fe3 plus will actually come into contact with a protein known as duodenal cytochrome B. So duodenal cytochrome B is just a protein that lies on the luminal side of an enterocyte. So once uh, Fe3 plus comes into contact with duodenal cytochrome B, it'll actually be reduced to Fe2 plus. Now there's also a transporter that is on the luminal side of an enterocyte, and that transporter is known as divalent metal transporter 1. Now, once you have uh, Fe2 plus in that 2 plus form, that, uh, that divalent metal transporter 1 will actually uptake the iron and bring it into the uh, enterocyte. Now, once the Fe2 plus is in the enterocyte, it can actually be in a free form or in a bound form. If it's in a bound form, it actually binds to a protein known as ferritin. Uh, or there are other proteins involved um, in binding. Another one is known as hemocytorin. Nevertheless, um, if you have free Fe2+, um, what will happen is it'll actually come into contact with another transporter on the other side of the enterocyte, the side that faces a blood vessel, um, and that transporter is called ferroportin-1. So when you have free Fe2+, that Fe2+, is actually transported through ferroportin-1, into the bloodstream. Now, uh, your bones play an import, a very important role in um, regulation of iron, of, uh, of bodily iron. Now, what will happen is the bones, um, your bones actually produce um, something known as transferrin. And now, transferrin actually binds to Fe2+, and transports iron through the blood. Now, as blood always comes back to the liver for processing, that transferrin and that Fe2 plus will eventually get to the liver and will be sensed by hepatocytes. When, uh, when transferrin and Fe2 plus are at high, high levels, uh, hepatocytes will actually release something known as hepcidin. Now hepcidin will then tra uh, travel back through the bloodstream to the enterocytes um, in, your, in your intestine and will actually inhibit ferroportin-1, so that you can no longer transport Fe2 plus into the bloodstream. So hepcidin uh, really just regulates the amount that your body um, uh, will actually regulate the amount of iron that your body will uptake, so that your body doesn't uptake too much. So once, once, uh, once you have a high enough transferrin and high enough iron, um, again, that'll um, cause a release of hepcidin, which then will inhibit um, ferroportin-1 and inhibit blood uptake of iron. Now, what happens to the iron? Uh, well, actually, your iron just keep continually gets uptaken into the uh, enterocyte through divalent metal transporter-1. So uh, your enterocytes continually uptake iron. Now, if ferroportin-1 is, is inhibited, that iron doesn't go anywhere. It stays in the enterocyte. And now what happens is... Um, it'll actually, um, the enterocytes actually become replaced. They get sloughed off, and that iron that's within the enterocytes actually gets uh, removed, gets excreted in your feces. Um, and, and actually, uh, the enterocytes are replaced every three days. So uh, if that iron is not taken up in the blood, it stays in your enterocytes and is excreted in your feces. Now, just a couple of quick notes. Um, as I mentioned before, dietary sources um, of iron are either it's in heme, heme form, or in a non-heme form. So if it's in heme form, it's it's been a part of blood, right? It's uh, maybe you've ingested blood, maybe you've eaten something with some blood in it. So it's in the heme form. The non-heme form you can find in um, different plant material. Now, what's the um, how much should you how much iron should you eat every day? Well, the recommended dietary allowance differs um, depending on how old you are, and, and um, so a difference between um, age groups and certain populations. So 
in early life, um, zero to six months of age, uh, you only very need you only need a very little amount, um, 0.27 milligrams per day. When you get a little older, seven to twelve months, you need about 11 milligrams per day. When you're one to three years old, you need about seven milligrams per day. Four to eight years old, you need 10 milligrams per day. Nine to 13 years old, you need eight milligrams per day. Um, when you're in um, during puberty, um, when you're about 14 to 18 years of age, um, males typically need 11 milligrams, while females need about 15 milligrams, just because of menses and um, blood loss during um, during your periods. And this is the same through um, um, ages of 19 to 50. Males typically need a, a little bit less; they need about 8 milligrams, while females need about 18 milligrams, um, just to to compensate for that blood loss during uh, menses. And when we all get older after the age of 51, we all need about 8 milligrams of iron per day. Now for um, pregnant women, uh, that's when you need the most. Uh, pregnant women typically need about 27 milligrams per day just because of uh, increase in blood volume um, for both um, the fetus, placenta, and the woman. Anyways, guys, that was iron absorption, transport, and metabolism in a nutshell. Um, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. That's always greatly appreciated. And anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.